I'm Monica and this is my dad Mike and together we're renovating a 1975 Airstream Sovereign. We picked it up last month and hauled it from a junkyard in Oregon to our home in Seattle, Washington. And now 46 days later, here's where we're at. We don't really know how to explain it to you so we're just going to show you all this random footage. Yeah. To me it's been like this. It's Beauty and the Beast. It's night and day. It's like a contrast of things and you called it one day doing the low hanging fruit. That's so. definitely how it started. First we vacuumed up as much dirt as we could, then scraped off all of the external stickers, assessed what was working and what wasn't, gave her a bath, scraped off old window tint and started taking things off. A lot of things off. So there, there's fun stuff that you see immediate results from. And then there's all those hard things behind the scenes, the, the nasty, dirty jobs. Uh, oh, is this the old poop? Yeah. So much work. What have we done, Monica? <laughs> there I feel like mainly you just like gained confidence to go for like the crazy stuff well that's some progress today My dad and uncle built this frame out of 2x4s to support the shell. After that, they jacked the shell up, completely detaching it from the frame. And now here is where we're at, a frame off restoration. You know, it became a no-brainer. We gotta take the body off of the frame, because if you want this done right to be a, a like brand new almost feeling trailer, you gotta do it from the ground up. There's a term that all Airstreamers learn pretty quickly. It's called monocoque. It means in French or Latin, one body. So what that means is the actual trailer, the shiny thing over here that I'm pointing at, and you guys have all seen, and the frame work as one body. So this is made deliberately to be as light as possible and to have some flex. So yeah, monocoque. Do not forget that term if you want to ever become an Airstream person. But we do have a better idea for this. These are 1 8 inch. We're going to get 1 16 inch angle iron, so one and a half by one. To sum everything up for dummies like me who may have a hard time understanding, the logistics, basically, the Airstream was 45 years old, so when my dad started ripping out the subfloor, it was pretty obvious, like, the frame was rusted. It was, like, rusted all the way through in some points, and it was either gonna need to be completely thrown away and make a new one, or kind of salvaged. I should say, though, doing. a lot of it was surface rust. When we started mm -hmm. knocking rust off, it wasn't in as bad, but there were okay. some critical spots. Out of 10 what kind of condition would you say it's in? Seven. Not bad, guys. So now what we're doing is we're ordering new parts and pieces of metal that we might need. This morning we are ordering some stuff for the frame and this hurts. Tell them. Well, the pieces were like 90 bucks each. We Not needed bad. four cross members. So that was like 360. The US United Parcel Service UPS ground fee, $308. $300 for shipping. And that's the cheapest. <gasps> oh. um, let's talk about budget. Seriously, I mean, how do you think? How much do you think we've spent on it so far? Oh, I've added up how much we've spent so far. So, not including the Airstream, the Airstream okay. was sixty-five hundred dollars. Not including it, we've spent about six or seven thousand dollars on various things that add up really quickly. That really, there's nothing to show for right. physically, but we needed a lot of tools. Were pretty expensive. The axles. Oh, the axles are the biggest cost so far. Those are like $1,800. Yeah. And then labor costs, we hired my uncle, his brother, um, the welder, various trips to Home Depot and Lowe's add up to like $300 every time, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So it adds up pretty quick. So our total is at about $12,000. I thought 30,000 would be a good target. So yeah. See what we could do 30 and probably gonna be more than that. Probably. It'll be interesting to see where we're at once we have the plumbing and the floors and the interior all the really, really essential, extremely important things to see where we're at after that for the fun things, like the interior design of it all. 
We took the body off, we got the frame out, we got the old floorboards out of there, and we looked at it and go, oh man, this is gonna be hard. And so we start polishing. The DeWalt's hair! Did I ever think I'd be excited about ordering- A tool? A tool, no, sure didn't, but I'm excited. Yeah. All right. There it is. It's smaller than I thought, which is good. It's got good. a handle. Oh, it's heavy. It's heavy though, isn't it? It is heavy. It's Velcro. We have some pads. Really? They're not quite that big. So we could try it out. Everything we need to properly polish this Airstream, except for knowledge. I don't have much knowledge on polishing, but the products we need are now here, so we can fix this mess, hopefully. I am taking, this is called Nuvite Polishing Compound. It smells like a lemon lime soda. You only need a little bit. And I'm just gonna go for it. Some people, they went with like an egg. starting to happen. Yeah. We kind of messed up on the polishing at first. Well. I am really worried that we are just ruining it right now. Do you see that? That, why did none of the videos look like that? We got a little too excited, and as we were waiting for our products to come in, we tried to polish the Airstream with stuff that we had around the house, and uh, it did not polish it properly. And this is just a sponge now. It's not looking good. But luckily, now we have gotten the hang of it. We've learned a few things about how to polish these things. We're not going for perfection. So we're still sticking with this guy right here. We're gonna keep going with the Nuvite Gray. So you keep working on that. And there we have some shine! We got a little more stuff down there, so we're right. going into that. Okay. Got her working finally. So the method right now he's using is just uh, folding it and pressing it again. Wow, they're coming up. I'm telling you, you gotta try just wrapping it around. Okay. See how they'll get tangled but they, up? They and... say if you start with it pressed against that it won't. Hmm. I think that's what they're kind of saying. Actually, should have left the shirt just kind of. All right. Polishing has been a lot of fun though. It's like the first thing that uncovers a layer of the Airstream that makes you go, wow, this is gonna look really good one day. Like, we're, we're gonna do this. It makes you dream about out camping and leaning out the window. Oh yeah. Yeah, looking through this window is pretty great. All right, so one thing we've agreed on is the bed's gonna be in the back. Yes. I like it going Queen size going horizontal. You like it going horizontal? Yeah. Now that we have the shell off and we're working on getting the frame fixed up, we have to let the welder know where we're gonna put the water tanks, which means we have to decide on the layout today. So you've got kitchen space here and then all this stuff over here. And then right there, we could just have a little counter space. I mean, do we want a dishwasher or no? No. Yeah, I, I thought no too, yeah. So an upper oven, somewhere right there. Is it gonna be like a two-in-one microwave oven kind of thing? Maybe. And then over here, a sink and then the burners. We gotta do a way better drawing. When starting this project, I was hooked from all of the amazing interior photos that I saw online. But what I didn't realize was all of the logistics that go into everything. Where does the toilet go? It is a lot of stuff being crammed into a very small amount of space. You have to think about how much weight is being distributed where. Just every decision has to make sense. No, the head, like your head would be there, your feet down there. So you're like, sleeping this way. Yes. So my dad and I are trying to work together to create this harmonious interior that aesthetically looks awesome. 
But if we put the bed this way, you could actually let the wardrobes cut in a little bit, maybe. But also logistically makes sense. Either up to there or have or just a make lower it counter. yeah a lower counter because then good you could have underneath, underneath storage. Yeah, Total. I agree. We are such a good team. Yeah. It's just like, it reminds me of Japan. So the most asked question is, why did you agree to this? Um, I had time. If I did this, I wouldn't have to remodel the bathrooms in the house. To many of you, taking on this project seemed extremely random of me, but something you guys may not know is how skilled my dad is. When my dad got out of the Navy, a friend of his who was a contractor took him under his wing and taught him how to build houses. Then when he met my mom, he took what he learned and bought a 1919 bungalow that needed a lot of fixing. Over the years, he has done so many projects around the house, from laying tile to knocking out walls. His biggest project to date was building this amazing deck, but not everything goes according to plan. All right, so I'm standing on a piece of concrete and I'm gonna pull this puppy down. Oh boy, I didn't want that to happen. Whoo, it's not the way I thought it would happen, but ooh, yay, yay, yay. Yeah, that was not textbook. Seriously though, my dad is super talented, full of knowledge, and a great problem solver. When buying this Airstream, I had full confidence that he could figure it out. I was just surprised he said yes. It's been a constant teardown ever since day one. We're, we're still not done tearing stuff off. So that's what we've been up to. A little bit of fun and a lot of dirty work. But we are starting to see some progress. We'll see you guys Checking next out. time. Don't forget to follow the at Mighty Mo Instagram. Connect with us there and subscribe for more Airstream restoration videos. All right, bye. If you guys haven't seen episode one of the Airstream project where we bought the Airstream, I'll have that conveniently linked below for you all. Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you like this series and we'll see you next time.